yeah. but uh, people are worried about what will the money be used for and because they don't trust our politicians year in year out i mean i have to say that uh, mm. nana kufordo has gained quite a bit of trust among Ghanaians for him yeah. being able to implement a policy that he had campaigned on the free shs policy yes. and that's that's kind of working yeah but by and large Ghanaians don't trust politicians yeah so the question is what's the money going to be used for how do we yeah. know whether the money is being used how do we know whether they're not going to as they say chop the money yeah i mean you know that is a classic problem with all revenue. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, we have, what we are committed to do is to be accountable for the resources mm -hmm. and report to parliament and to the people of Ghana mm -hmm. on how much we've collected and what we've used it for. The primary objective really, I think we have a couple of fundamental problems that we were looking to address. The two key ones is unemployment, especially amongst the youth mm -hmm. and infrastructure. Infrastructure being roads, roads bridges, yeah, bridges, buildings. rails, mm -hmm. buildings, you know. Now, you know, it's amazing how a tired road in a community can transform the whole it, community. It does, it does, absolutely you know? it does. I mean, the, the, the increase in productivity, development, progress, even the increase in the land values mm -hmm. is automatic. And so you really enrich your people if you can put in place these, these, this infrastructure. On the unemployment level, we have a very useful population. People have been said to come out with a, gra a graduate degree and, you know, not be able to get a job two, three years are just sitting at home. And I don't think there's anything worse than really wanting to work and be able to hold your head up proudly and not being able to do so. And why is that the case? Because we're not creating enough jobs in this environment to be able to meet the uh, educated people that are coming out of the schools and especially now that you have a free SHS policy mm -hmm. where everybody has access mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. a high school education you have a lot of people that are coming out with degrees and with high school leaving certificates who we have to find ways to accommodate so the idea is to use this to create a program in partnership with the banks where we can provide seed funding and capital to young uh, Ghanaians who want to start a business, start some entrepreneurial venture, go into agriculture, and anything else that they want what to do. What about those who don't want to do that? They want to work at the Ministry of Finance. Yeah, you see, that is another fundamental problem. Mm -hmm. You know, this um, uh, huge interest in working in the public sector. Yeah. And there's a reason why that is the case. Because over time, it's turned out to be the most secure and safe job. It might not pay you as well, but at least you know that you know, I think the COVID pandemic is a classic case. Not one public sector worker lost their salary, yeah. not for one day. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you had teachers that were laid off in the private sector. Private sector yeah. I mean, their own same colleagues mm -hmm. who was in the public sector, teacher, was getting paid, even though they were at home, yeah. but they in the private sector, when they're going, you know, so that job security is not there in the private sector. Mm -hmm. And until we change that by being able to create more jobs than people are seeking jobs so that the competition now comes is, is moved to the other side where is the job is the employer who is scrambling to find good people mm -hmm. because there are f too few people to fill the positions we will never get that job but how are you going to do that with money how are you going to do that you're going to do that with money by creating an entrepreneurial culture government cannot create these jobs on their own mm -hmm. government can create these jobs by creating an enabling environment that allows people to take entrepreneurial risks. The biggest challenge for us in Africa is a lack of access to capital. Mm -hmm. Because you can't start anything that will grow to become something without some kind of equity to begin with. And so we need to provide the tools to our people and our youth who are very innovative. I mean, if you go online now, you see there's a young kid from Livingston House who um, is an artist and if you see the work he does he has a website or a page on instagram that he sells his art he does portraits and you look at this kind of talent and you realize that somebody like this with a little funding can go a long way mm -hmm. you know and right now with the way you have social media if you're in the services business you can really advertise for next to nothing and really grow a business for, for next to nothing, just with some small capital. And I think it, you know, it, it, it behooves us to be able to identify such people and support them with 
as a catalyst for them to create job opportunities for their friends and for others. And that's the only way we can address this problem permanently, mm -hmm. rather than create more public sector jobs. Already, the public sector compensation bill is huge. I mean, 30 40% of our total revenue goes into compensating public sector workers. And they are still on strike, demanding mm. um, increases in their pay. So if we don't take care and we don't provide private sector or create private sector jobs or help with the creation of private sector jobs, it will get to a point where most of our revenue will be used to pay salaries of, of mm. our workers. So that's interesting. Okay, so what will the money be used for? The answer is it will be used in two areas, mm. creating infrastructure and uh, supporting uh, ideas for young people to find work. Yes. It's something to and, do. And creating jobs.